I grew up in a little town in East Tennessee, Jefferson City, Tennessee, to be precise, just outside of Knoxville. Um, it was in the early, obviously in the late 50s, early 60s. My first school, first and second grade, was in the black school in the little town. I enjoyed um, taking apart things, putting them back together. My, it was my father uh, started me. He was also a tinkerer. There wasn't anything he couldn't uh, fix. I first knew I wanted to work for IBM when I was actually in middle school. Uh, at that time, I became enthralled or very interested in computers. And so at that time, I said I wanted to be an engineer. I was fortunate to keep my grades up, uh, get a scholarship to go to the University of Tennessee. When I uh, graduated from the University of Tennessee with my undergraduate degree, I uh, and started with IBM, I knew I wanted to immediately start working on my master's degree. And so I went to uh, Florida Atlantic University uh, when it was much smaller than it is now. And they had a master's program in electrical engineering. And so I got my master's degree from Florida Atlantic University. And so uh, after about 10 years working on the PC, I knew it was time. I told IBM I wanted to get my PhD. They said, great, uh, we'll cover the cost, but you got to pick a school that is uh, worthy of going to. I said, okay. And so I applied at Stanford. Actually, I applied at quite a few schools, MIT and others. They all accepted me, but I thought Stanford would be a neat place uh, to go. Um, and so having the opportunity to go to a university like Stanford was great. The PC patents uh, that I uh, worked on with the team actually uh, came first. Most of them, I think the first few were on the color graphics adapter uh, for the original PC. The ISA bus patents came second because that the ISA bus was defined in the uh, PC-80. And so most of the technology we developed uh, to support the PC-80 was integrated into the, uh, the ISA bus definition and those patents applied to that. The ISA bus was developed obviously back in the mid 80s to support the PCs at the time, the IBM PCs at the time. We developed that bus to be expandable, so the so the systems could attach other devices, and it allowed the industry to build devices that would plug into the PC. So we essentially, it essentially created an industry because we openly defined the bus. So um, it was the bus of choice for a long time, and it led to I think it, its biggest contribution was it helped establish the industry. I mean, that if, if you had to point to one thing, it enabled the industry to build not only systems that were all identical and compatible, but adapters that were all uh, the same for the, for the same interface. So it created a, an opportunity for people to build stuff and, and make money, basically, and, and make a difference in people's lives. And so I, I um, kind of never stopped uh, patenting, I it was uh, I always had interesting ideas that seemed to have never been done before. Uh, my most recent ones are in the area of neuromorphic computing, where you're using the the brain as a model for computing, and you're using neurons and synapses, at least artificial neurons and synapses, to build systems that operate uh, more like the human brain. So I, so I had had a, a plan. When I started with IBM, I knew what I wanted to do, when I wanted to do it, and what positions I wanted to hold for the next 40 years, actually, including an academic uh, career. Yeah, when I was getting ready to retire from IBM, I obviously looked around to different places that would be interesting uh, to work at. Uh, University of Tennessee was starting some work in no more for computing. Which, we, which I was interested in. Uh, the professors there kind of embraced me, said, yep, Mark would be nice to have as part of the faculty. So that was, you know, everything kind of came together. As I was uh, interim dean at the College of Engineering at, at University of Tennessee, that was a great job, a, a great college. Uh, that, that opportunity was a special opportunity for me. I am not afraid to try. 
Uh, and if I try and fail, then it's a learning experience. It's not a failure. And that's got to be your mindset. If you're afraid to try, you'll never discover anything.